Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. My name is Kelly Jones, and I am a health educator senior with Cook County Health Department, and I am your host and moderator for these school health meetings. Welcome to all who join the meetings. Just making sure I can see everyone. Um, as I stated again, thank you for joining us. And we'd like to make sure that everyone is getting the information that they need and that Cook County Health Department can support them in the best way that we can, which brings us to our objectives, sharing updates, information and resources to help navigate school health issues, asking frequently asked questions and provide CCDPH contact information and resources onto our agenda. When we had our School Health Advisory Council meeting a few weeks ago, a few subjects that the schools were experiencing came up, one of which is difficulty with getting families to have their vaccine requirements completed. And as for various reasons, is mostly for access. So I am bringing you some mobile health resources that I hope would be beneficial to you and your community. Couple announcements. As you all know, but for those who aren't aware, we are meeting on a monthly basis. The third Friday of each month will be our school health meeting with different subjects that will hopefully bring good resources and information to the school community. Our webinars are recorded and they're all uploaded to our CCDPH website as well as our YouTube page. You can look for them usually the next week after we've had our webinar. Make sure you keep your lines muted. We don't want to disturb anyone. We want everyone to be able to hear the presentations. And if you could please just make sure that the information that the email address that you're registering with is your correct email address as I get a lot of bounce backs. And I want to make sure everyone gets the resources and the slides that I share. Here is a resource flyer. Um, it's just one a one stop shop to have all of the information that I'm going to share with you all in one place. So you can find this information on our Cook County website under communications, but it has information on where you can get um, your immunization, any PPE or any other resources that you may need. For those who have to uh, ask general email, uh, general questions for the county, they're not sure who it should go to, you can send that to healthycook at cookcountyhhs.org, and that's webinar-related questions or any general questions. If you are reporting to communicable disease and you have line lists, you need to report communicable disease metrics questions, you will send that to ccdph underscore schools at cookcountyhhs.org. And sometimes I get emails, sometimes communicable disease get emails that's meant for me. We have no problem sharing it back and forth. We'll make sure we get your questions answered no matter which way they go, but this is just an easier way for you to know who to send this information to. And um, our school specific website, as well as our Cook County Health Department website information. Here is a link to share uh, with partners if you'd like to host a vaccination event, in-home vaccinations, transportation. I have individual slides for this information, but this is sort of a one-stop shop if you wanted to just copy or print this one slide and then you could have it for your resources to share with your community. I get a lot of questions about naloxone requests, and I understand in January that's going to be a school specific program and a requirement. If you have questions regarding that program and that requirement, please send them to Denise Holman. She is the coordinator for that, and she can fill those requests as well as answer any questions you may have about that. This link is how you can request that naloxone for your organization, and Denise's email address is listed for any other questions or concerns. For EpiPens and albuterol requests for those schools that aren't doing the albuterol program through uh, Rescue Illinois and you're sending them to me, that will come to me, kjones1 at cookcountyhhs.org. All those requests must come from a medical professional, i.e. the school nurse trained on the administration of um, medication and make sure you type them, no links, or an, uh, make sure you attach them and no links. I'm unable to access foreign links. Just to be careful. As an addendum, we are now requesting that anyone who requests the EpiPens and the albuterol also provide the form that looks like this. And you would just list three people within your organization who has been identified to administer that medication and has been trained. And I'll send you all of these forms when you request that. 
And sometimes uh, people want a little resources on how can I secure EpiPens and get them paid for? Where can I find training on uh, medication training? And I just provided some links. If you know anyone who is COVID is still out there, we don't hear about it as much, but people are still getting it. You can get your Paxlovid medication to help with COVID. You can send to you through Uber or DoorDash. It's a program through Walgreens, and it's very helpful for those who can't get out of the house or get anyone to get their medications for them. We are still offering the free transportation to your vaccination program, and you can find that information at the link here. This is information on all of our. Um, CCH, Cook County Health Clinics. This slide is vaccine specific. However, Cook County Health does not turn away anyone regardless of their insurance status and their immigration status. If you need um, health care, not just vaccinations, if you need health care, you're uninsured, you're underinsured, you're in need of county care, you can go to any of these clinics and get seen and get set up by a primary care physician. Just some resources regarding uh, mental health, parenting support, teen support. Here is the number for the 988 suicide hotline and the um, number for 211. We did a presentation earlier in the spring for United Way to talk about the 211 helpline. It's a nationwide resource that you can text, call, or go online to 211 to ask any question. It could be about housing, food, anything. Call 211 and they have those resources. Just some information about mental health services. I know a, a few of the schools had reached out saying that they had some issues uh, with, with behavior uh, problems with students. And Sertoma is a resource that you can reach out for information if you need help with homeless services or mental health use services. Here's information on IDPH's Wellness on Wheels um, vaccination program for various events. And also a little known resource for our, for our partner at um, the Park District, they have a Nature Express bus for if your school is going on a field trip or something like that, your organization is going on a field trip, you can request the bus, they can come pick you up and don't let transportation be a barrier to get out to these wonderful forest preserves and all of their events that they have. Just some information on uh, free CPR classes and all of our um, partnered events and Cook County events are listed on to our Cook County Health Department calendar is linked here. This is just a screenshot of a few of the upcoming events, but there are more events listed monthly for our calendar. We spoke about this last month. Cook County is trying to push the messaging for Boost Up Cook County. We want to make sure that everyone knows this is the time to boost up. And we are speaking about your general vaccinations, your flu shot. This is the time to get your flu shot. The weather took a sharp dip a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sure everyone is feeling it and sneezing. This is the time to get your flu shot. This is the time to get your updated COVID vaccine if you haven't already done so. So this is our website with additional resources about how to get those vaccines and stay up to date with some beautifully pictured, purple's my favorite color. So this is my favorite of the eye-catching um, documents that we put together. So these also are available on our website and they're free to download if you want to use it for your organization. We are, uh, you can co-brand and put your own logo on them. Feel free to download any of this materials on our website. And it's just more resources to help you stay safe, how to mask up, uh, more resources about the COVID vaccine. Some people still have not gotten their vaccine. They may still be afraid. Still information on the COVID vaccine and the variants and how you can stay safe and how safe the vaccine is, contrary to what some people may still believe. Again, information on how to get vaccinated at home for you and your family, not just someone who um, is uninsured. So please look into that information and make sure that if they hadn't gotten vaccinated, don't let not having transportation be a barrier because someone can come to them and vaccinate them. And this is information in English and in Spanish. We have been told that we have 30,000 plus COVID antigen test kits available to give away to organizations and schools. Please, if you are still using the COVID test kits for your schools and your organizations, you may request them at the following link. We would love to get them in the hands of people who can use them and not have them expire and have to be destroyed. So please, please, please go to the link, share with any other schools or organizations who are not on this call because we want to make sure we get these into the hands of those who could use them. 
and in general, there's some uh, PPE that a uh, PPA PPE. Oh, I can't get my letters. PPE <laughs> that we can also share for organizations as well. As well, you can find all of that information on the following links. For those who may want to have a school clinic, a school vaccination clinic, we are still offering that. The link is within the slide. Please uh, reach out if you want to have a vaccination clinic with your schools. I know that, again, some schools have had issues with um, vaccination, so this is just a way for us to bring the resources to you. And it's just a little um, resources on the best way that you can host a vaccination clinic with some tips. And that is all of the resources and the information that I have for you. I'm going to bring Sheila Giovanni to the stage so that Sheila can give you guys a communicable disease update to help you stay safe. Sheila, are you here? Yes, Kelly. Hi, Thank Sheila. you so very much. I am here, but I'm definitely going to need a moment. Um, Having a little um, technical difficulties um, with pulling up something. So if you can give me a moment or if you would like to move on to the next person, um, I definitely okay. would appreciate that. And my apologies. Oh, Thanks. No again. problem. We can we can move on. And if you're having a problem uploading something, maybe you can send it to me in Teams and I can try to upload it on my end. Whatever one, whatever works. So while we are waiting, we can move on to our presenters. And Sheila, we'll add you to the end, so they'll give you some time to be able to um, get your slides together. Whatever Thank is most comfortable so for you. Thank you so very much. No I problem. Really appreciate we'll add that. Sheila to the end. So I would like to welcome Mobile Care to Chicago. Uh, will the PowerPoints be emailed? Yes, they will. I would like to welcome Mobile Care Chicago to speak about their program. Hi, Kamari. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for inviting me. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, I hope you guys are having a good Friday and you're looking forward to your weekend. I know I am. It's been a crazy week. This Friday has been. Um, but yeah, I just want to talk to you guys about some of the services that we provide at Mobile Care Chicago. As in our name, we're mobile. We're in Chicago, um, but we're not limited to the city of Chicago. We actually um, go throughout Cook County and also go to some of the neighboring collar counties to provide care. Our care includes asthma and allergies, as well as physical immunization care and also dental care. Um, our care um, focuses 100% on pediatric, for the pediatric population. Um, we put our vans up directly to the school sites. Um, we service those kids that are enrolled at that school, as well as those people who are living in the surrounding area. So we're not just a service for the school. We use the school as a hub to provide services to the, the, the entire community. Um, we provide our care at no cost to the families. And we, our primary services are asthma and allergies. And when I say primary services, um, I mean the things that we do year round. So asthma, allergy, dental, we go out five days a week. Granted, there's no holidays or any um, days off, but we go out five days a week. We service kids all five of those days. Our secondary or um, the program that we or the service that we implement during certain times of the year is physical immunization. So those kick off kind of um, really light in the spring. Um, we do encourage people to try and um, take advantage of our services early especially for physicals and immunization, those dates book up fast because the need is very tremendous. Um, so we start putting physical immunization dates on our calendar in the late spring. We pick up through the summer and we get really, really heavy during those um, August, September and October months prior to the cutoff day. And then after that, we usually try and uh, pull away from physical immunizations and then we go back to our primary services. Um, while we're doing our uh, secondary services of physical immunizations, we are still doing our primary service of asthma, allergy and dental. Um, we provide all of the childhood vaccines um, through our VFC program that we partner with. Um, so, and we also provide um, the lead and hemo testing as well as the physicals, uh, sports physicals, um, and make sure we are doing everything that we can to get those kids up to date and keep them in schools and try and reduce those barriers of care. Either it's from, you know, transportation issues or parents not having access to care, not being able to make appointments. Um, we try and cater to those kids at that school and try and get them um all seen up and so that we can keep them in school. Um, I, I I think that it's a lot more to that, but I would probably just start confusing you guys. So if there's any questions, I can answer them. 
Sure, since we have uh, three presenters who all have the same sort of um, lane, if you will, maybe we can hold the questions and answers for all of you, because I'm sure they're the same questions for all of you at the end. And um, if uh, Kamari, in the meantime, if you would like to put your contact information in the chat for anyone who wants to capture that, I will make sure I also uh, send all of the contact information with the slides later on so everyone can reach you. Um, but, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I heard, I heard something. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about Mobile Care Chicago? Is there a particular area that um, you are in? No, we are all over, so we don't have boundaries. So that's the good thing about Mobile Care Chicago. We have a partnership with CPS schools, but we are also in daycare centers and parochial schools. We don't have boundaries. We are as far south as in Lothian, Calumet Park. We, our dental van is um, in Waukegan. Um, we just expanded our asthma and allergy and physical immunization clinic to Lake County, Illinois. So we don't have any boundaries. We just um, need to have a good partner with the schools and the champion in the schools that's willing to get the information out there. Um, we do distribute surveys and consent forms to care. Um, we have a number that we'd like to reach in order for us to be able to um, make sure that a program is sustainable once we start, once we get into a school space. Um, because the last thing we want to do is to try and is to start initiating care but not be able to keep their care going. So we do have um, a few like minor requirements that we, we ask that um, really our school champions are willing to get out there with the families that they serve and get the, um, the information out there and get those consent forms returned. And we pretty much take it from there. So boundaries, no, and we're always looking to expand. Sounds great. Thank you, Kamari. Okay. Well, I would like to um, welcome Amy Moses, Moses, I'm sorry, of Advocate Children's Hospital and Ronald McDonald Mobile Vaccination to, speak, to share some about your program. Hi, Amy. Hi. Hi, thank you, Kelly. No and uh, thank you, Kamari. I learned things about you that uh, we <laughs> worked together and I just found out. So I appreciate all of that. Um, I am Amy Moses. I coordinate two Ronald McDonald Caramobiles for Advocate Children's Hospital. We're jointly funded between Ronald McDonald House Charities and Advocate Children's Hospital. I have two separate units. Each one has a nurse practitioner, a medical assistant, and a driver, a south and a north. Our south goes, oh, Joliet, Matson, Harvey, Country Club Hills, uh, Oakland. Think of all of the southern suburbs, and they go up through the city. Our north would pick up in Uptown Rogers Park and go to the Wisconsin border. So we serve Lakefront out to West Aurora High School. Um, we have wheels, like Amari said, and we use them. Um, boundaries are not an issue for us. Um, we serve year round. So uh, like Kamari said, getting those physicals and vaccines done in the spring before you lose those families for the summer is great. We're serving year round. So we're in schools during summer programming and really just trying to get those kids ready for the first day of school. Many of our suburban partners do have a first day exclusion. And so we are trying to get those kids in the door and keep them in um, school. I'd like to put a pitch out. Summer's a great time to have us out. We have more days, more flexibility. Um, and it's really the school nurses and school champions uh, to wrangle those consent forms for us and get those to us in advance. Um, our team can provide physicals, sports physicals, and vaccines for students age five to 18 who have Medicaid or no insurance at all. Um, all of our services are done at no cost, so we're not billing the family, the school, the county, or the state. We're 100% funded for all of our services. We uh, provide all of the required vaccines as well as all of the recommended like flu, hep A, HPV, and meningitis B for um, students as well as doing their sports physicals and their school physicals. 
We primarily serve at schools, but we do a lot of community events as well, libraries, uh, mobile home parks, anywhere where somebody has a group of children. Um, we like to go where they learn, play, live, and break down that barrier to transportation. Um, most of our visits are done without a parent present, so they're pre-consented. We would schedule a date for the school. The school would identify students in need of services, give out our consent forms, gather back the consent forms, and send that to us in advance along with the vaccine record. We register and schedule everyone in EPIC. We gather the vaccine. We roll up in our beautiful mobile clinics with our team, and we provide those services on site. We give a copy of the health record to the student in an envelope and in a backpack. We have a backpack program. And we give a separate copy before leaving uh, the school to our school contact. So the school will have a copy of everything we did, will not have to chase the family for that paper. We know school nurses spend a lot of time chasing families for documents. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is by email, amy.moses at aah.org. Um, I believe Kelly has our forms, is that right? We have them in English and Spanish, Arabic, Mongolian, Russian, Ukrainian, and oh, I'm missing somebody, Polish, and in Polish. And so we can send those to you. Um, we have translation on board, both video and audio. So we're able to talk to newcomers. Legal status is not um, a barrier to us. What you have right now is our scheduling template. This is basically the demographics that we would need uh, to get someone registered and scheduled in EPIC. It's really basically what do they need? Who are they? What language do they speak? Um, we have one of these with appointment times for summer. So if parents are bringing children on site, maybe they're not learning on site during the summer, but you would like to host us, we can give appointment times and we do stick to them. So families are not coming at nine o'clock and being served at 1.30. We are sticking to an appointment time so families can know. Uh, here is one of our consent forms. This is basically, who are you? What is your insurance status? Um, we check because we cannot serve privately insured children. We just see kids who are either uninsured or who have Medicaid and are not able to um, get to resources. Here it is in Spanish. And then um, there is just a health history form as well, where we would ask the family some questions. We do a short social determinant of health question. Um, if a family screens positive for food insecurity, where they're given a backpack that has food in it, along with school supplies, hygiene supplies, and the winter coats and hats. If they screen that food is not an issue for them, they get the same backpack with the hygiene products and school supplies. Additionally, I supervise an AmeriCorps member who calls families after the visit to offer resources in their language and in their zip code. We can offer things food resources, domestic violence, behavioral health, dental vision, housing assistance, clothing, those sort of things to try to wrap around. And I think that's everything. That was a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to type and listen at the same time. I know that's that you right. gave your uh, email address. I wanna make sure that I get it shared to everyone. Okay, it I is Amy Moses. It's Amy, A M Y dot mm -hmm. M O S E S at A A H dot org. I can put it in the chat. No, I was typing in. I'm sorry. I just, okay. I just didn't finish it. <laughs> I'm sending that right now. Thank you so much, Amy. That was fantastic information. And I see everybody feverishly copying everything from the chat. So it is well needed. And um, if there aren't any, uh, Anything else to add? I would like to welcome April McCurry White from Med Advocacy Mobilized Healthcare Services to talk to us a little bit about her program. I'm glad you could join us, April.
I think we lost April. I'll give it a, another minute to see if she could come back on. Maybe she lost connection as it happens all the time. Well, while we wait on April to come back, if there are any questions, I know we we're going to use leave that to the end, but let's fill the time. If there are any specific questions for Kamari or Amy, we can ask that now while we wait on April to come back. You can feel free to unmute if you're not a fast typer. Hello, my question is for Kamari. Sure, go ahead. Do you have to, um, do you also have use a uh, Medicaid or only see students who do not have any insurance or do you see sure. everyone? So for specifically for our vaccines, so kids that need vaccinations, we can only see kids who are either public insurance, so Medicaid or uninsured. We can't see, we cannot vaccinate a child with private insurance. For every other part of our services, we are not concerned with their insur their with their insurance status. So we'll see kids with or without insurance for every other part. The only basically private insurance is not a good thing to have when you want vaccines, I would say for our program. Thank you. You're welcome. Mari, there's a question in the chat. I missed the neighborhoods you serve. Could you share that again? So we serve um, all over the city of Chicago um, and surrounding suburbs. So we are in Midlothian, Illinois. It's too many in the name, but I'll just try and rattle off a few. Um, we're in Midlothian, Illinois, Calumet Park, Illinois. We are in the city of Chicago. Most of our sites, um, we have over 40 sites. Most of our sites are CPS. Those are all over different neighborhoods from Belmont Cragen to back of the yards. Um, we have, um, I don't know what you call the, the east side sites over there near Indiana border. Um, we have some Bronzeville sites. We have um, some Rogers Park sites. We are as far north as Haight Elementary School, which is up right near uh, Loyola University. So that's pretty far north. Our dental program actually goes into Waukegan, Illinois. So um, it's it's d multiple different neighborhoods. And if there is a need for us to come into a neighborhood, we will come into the neighborhood as long as we have, again, a champion at the school who is you, is willing to get those consents out and um, garner that interest. Great, looks like April is trying to connect. I'll, I'll go to one more question while April's trying to connect. Is I think this is for everyone. Is there a minimum number of students needed for either agency to visit the school? So yes, um, we. I, I guess I would more um, say it is a minimum number for us to be able to be sustainable at a school site more than it is to visit a school site. So we'd like to have 25 active patients um, or potential new patients um, because we can see 13 patients on our asthma side. We can see 13 patients on our physical immunization side, um, and on the asthma side, those patients will get follow-up visits. Everyone's, as you guys know a lot, I see a lot of nurses here, everyone's follow-up won't be the same. So if we, on average, we go to a school site every few months or like four times, four to five times a year. And those um, follow-up visits will be different. So we need to have enough students where we can rotate through throughout the year. Amy, would you like to add to that? Uh, the way we do it just a little bit differently. So our vaccine only visits take about 20 minutes. Our physical exams take about 40 minutes with or without vaccines. Um, we are the children's hospital. So uh, we're doing a full head to toe physical. We know some of the families that we see may not be able to access health care and have not been able to access health care for some. So while we have them in front of us, we do a complete physical and that takes about 40 minutes. So we, our hours are 9 to 2.30. We can do about 10 physicals in a day. Uh, most folks would have us do a mixture of some vaccine only, some physicals. So the number really depends on what the school needs. I would say we would ask for at least a half day of students to see to make the visit. 
However, we know the need is so incredibly great. And we know with our first visit, we may see fewer people, but families speak to each other and the word gets out. And so we see our second and third visits in a place be much better attended than, than our first. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Amy. And if you are ready and, and able, welcome back to April McMurray White. <laughs> I know technology is always a problem, but we're here for you. So feel free. <laughs> we're glad you made it back. Thank you. I apologize. I guess my uh, laptop um, and myself, we both got so excited listening com to Kamari and Amy. I'm both familiar with your program because it's very similar to ours, but I guess the laptop decided, hey, we don't need you anymore. No, just joking. No, happy Friday, everyone. Um, great pre presentation. Um, our services is pretty much the same. I'm with Med Advocacy. We're pretty much new, but I've seen you at some of our events or your services. Um, for vaccinations and immunization because we do partner out in Harvey with Family Christian Health. They've been a big part of this with helping us, you know, get these services off the ground. Um, we are a managed services organization. Um, we do vaccinations, immunizations, school physicals right now and sports physicals as well. It, it's directed by under Felicia, Dr. Felicia Davis. She is a retiree of Cook County Hospital, but she's um, she's the one that's behind this and helped us get this off the ground and, and you know, able us to do this. Um, our services, however, work a little different the way that we offer them in the aspect that we are mobile, mobile. We do mobilize services. However, we go on site. And the reason is because we found there was a need um, just doing COVID providing services and um, research with the schools being there physically, mainly out in the south suburbs, Calumet City, Fort Heights, Markham, Matson, and so on. Try, although we're just like you got ladies that you mentioned, we don't have any boundaries, but right now our primary focus is there in those areas because it's such a large need. And um, it, it's hard to get all the services out, like you said, and you have to make appointments, it's time consuming. So with that, what we like to do, we coordinate services. We're not here to take away anything. Um, we coordinate service by, as I stated before, by mobilizing them, meaning we go on site. We set up at the school sites to provide the physicals. With that, we're able to do a little more because we do have nurse practitioners and nurses that come aboard that we've um, hired to do this. So, for instance, whereas I know some of the schools, like they're calling now, even after that October 15th exclusion date, I just want to hit on some of these bullet points because again, we do, um, our services do kind of match what you all do with, what, with the exception what I mentioned, we don't do asthma um, Chicago like you do, which is great and some other things. However, um, back to the point at hand, we can have mul multiple nurse practitioners come aboard. So like, for instance, if you mainly are out in the South suburbs and some of the schools we service, Instead of just having that one nurse practitioner there on site, because we set up on site, we don't actually have a band and that's that, that we're mobile. Um, we would have two, depending on the school needs. So if you told me you have 50 kids that need to be seen that day, our advantage point is that we would bring out that staff and team to help service you. As long as you have a dedicated, you know, vacant classroom maybe, or I don't know, like a conference room with running water, of course, um, nearby. Um, so that we can keep everything sanitized, we would be able to service your school. We do participate um, for, with partners with Vaccine for Children. We're all able to offer that. Everyone knows the guidelines about that. Um, we do bill Medicaid, I will say. Um, these are not 100% funded right now. We are working on that, but insurance is required. We will work with the school in some cases because I've seen it even with my own kids, with my husband working and all. If you have, if they have private insurance, because we do run into that with some of the schools, we are able to customize that and work with you on that because that comes every everybody, well, mostly everybody knows that comes from a different vaccine batch. But we will be willing to work with you because we are managed service organizations. There are some little things that we are able to do more of because of our other partnering organizations. That's what we do. We bring together other healthcare partners to get those types of things done, especially, like I said, we're all for the South Suburbs, although we don't have boundaries, but there are there is mainly a shortage there. So right now we're trying to focus on that because even as we speak, um, we have appointments along with Family Christian next week and the week after, 
just for school physicals because they're not all getting done, you know, unfortunately, because there's such a large needs in these communities. So that's mainly what we do, some points that I, um, without taking up too much of your time today, but again, we do offer those mobilized services in, in the south suburbs and surrounding areas if anyone is interested. And I can take more questions if needed. Thank you. Fantastic, April. Are there any questions? Oh, there is one that just popped up. Are you able to see students with private insurance? We can. We would have to, um, you know, talk about that. And we're trying to get ready for the next school year. So that because that is we found, you know, that is still a need um, as we service them. So, yes, um, to answer that question. Yes, we are. We are willing to do that. Yes. Great. Are there any other questions for April or for Amy or Kamari, any tips for gathering consent forms? There's always an issue for us and we're very interested in providing vaccines. That would be a general question for either of you, if you'd like to take it. You know, here's the golden question. This is what I'll just say. Um, we will go to a school that has 300 kids out of compliance, like a big high school, and they'll get back eight consent forms. So just to share, I was a school social worker and this mobile clinic that I work with now visited my school because I received the refugees. So they came 13 times in my three years to see people. So I have gathered consents on the school in to have a mobile clinic before they wrote this position for me. I really would encourage a school to reach out to your social workers, your bilingual coordinators, those working with families who don't have stable housing. Um, the folks in the lunchroom, all of these folks are probably either already working with families, so it's easier to get that consent form signed because there may be an existing relationship, or they may know of folks who the school nurse is not aware of who may have lost their insurance recently or is in need, but, but it may be a hidden need. Um, that's what I would advise is use the resources that are already in your school and are already in contact with families. Awesome. Um, as I said, like the relationship builds as you go. We may have fewer the first time and the word of mouth gets around. I just wanted to add to that. Can you hear me? Uh oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I was muted. Please go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Kelly. I just want to add to that. One of the things that we saw there was a need of where we were able to this summer, this school year, when school started um, out in the suburbs back in August, uh, we did, we, the schools asked us to come out to attend pre-registration. So that was very successful for us because as the parents came out to register the school, um, the students, we were able to get them to sign off as a proxy for the school nurse to do it because we knew that we would be out there doing physicals. So that's one way you can implement that. Um, I recommend another way um, and another resource that we have our community health workers. We can work, have that uh, community health worker. She can work with the school nurse or alone um, once we do a linkage agreement and so on, you know, to reach out to the parents to kind of get those things done. Um, so again, anyone that's looking to do that, there's other ways as well. But I highly recommend doing school registration because lots of times the parent or guardian got to be there to register that child especially in some of the communities that we're working in. So what we've done this year just to get this program going and we knew there was going to be a large need instead of the school nurse hunt, hunting that parent down saying, OK, your school, your child's going to be excluded for school. You haven't you know, you, you, you can't take them for a physical or for their vaccination. We have someone here can do it. So we try to get them at the beginning of the school year. And it was very successful with doing so because we saw a lot of parents who was hesitant because they didn't quite understand. They thought we was taken away from the primary care. And we told them, no, this has nothing to do with that. We just need you to sign off, so on and so on. Some of the parents that was hesitant, believe it or not, and we were so glad that we got them because the school nurse, she was a big help with that as well. We had a table set up doing registration and she said, see, those are going to be some of the parents. And lo and behold, we got them to sign off and those kids got service. And we're so thankful for that because the parents kept saying, we're going to take them. We're going to take them. They're part of Rush Medical Group. Well, we know, you know, that's kind of far in the south suburbs. They're not going to always get there, although there's transportation um as well and we also help with that if needed um transportation i just wanted to add that but those are some things that we've taken um been proactive about because of the communities we service and because of the culture 
of the communities that we encounter, we have to cater to that. So that's one of our expertise that we can work with if needed. Thanks, April. I also maybe suggest some of these uh, fun times that are coming up in the next few months. Is there going to be uh, a Halloween party, a fall festival, a Christmas concert, you know, before they get their cookie or something, you know, hand them that form, you know, so get them while they're there. They're going to show up for those fun times. So I think that's a good idea as well. Uh, here's a, qu a wonderful question for you all. Has uh, anyone um, coordinated with a mobile optometrist? <laughs> the big eyes have shown no me that the answer yeah, is Yeah, we've been getting a lot of requests. Honestly, we have not. That is being worked on. We've been getting that request a lot. Honestly, we have not because we've been so focused on the vaccinations and physicals. There is one national mobile vision provider that uh, goes state by state, but that seems to be the real cracks in the mobile system. We can do mobile dental. We can do mobile behavioral health bereavement, physicals. Um, vision seems to be the biggest um, problem. Definitely something we're all talking about in the mm -hmm. Illinois Mobile Health Coalition meetings. Okay. As a follow-up, they said they're aware of one, probably the same one you speak of, but they only service CPS. So that is a problem for those in the suburbs. Uh, another question is, uh, I've looked into students who have transferred in from out of the country. So I, I believe the problem is you're unable to locate records or things of that nature. If you wanted to elaborate, Caitlin, you have the floor. Uh, you know, I just meant um, I've worked with um, the mobile care clinic with Amy, um, and we've found a lot of students in need who have who are transferring in from out of the country. So that's um, why I actually started to start filling the slots. Great. That's a great tip. Thank you. Are there any more questions for um, any of our presenters? We are so grateful that you guys had the time to come on to share. Uh, April, if I could ask you to share your email address in the chat for Absolutely. everyone who's interested. And I am so happy that everyone was able to hear about your programs because there are quite a few people who are not aware about these resources. And we want to make sure that everyone can access these resources in order to help the communities they serve. Are there any more questions for Amy Kamari or April while we have them on the call. And Kelly, if I may add while we're waiting just to see if there's any other question, one thing that I know um, that I, and I said that, you know, I would talk to you about this, you know, just for future references, um, there's, you know, funding because we do bill Medicaid and we're leaning more and more towards school-based services and care, but I won't get into all that right now, but regardless of that, but because we do bill we can work with the school. There's some extra incentives there for them to get that money back because of the expansion on school-based health services that Governor Pressner was able to um, approve back in April and it officially, I believe, set off in September of the school year. So those are some other things that we can share and talk about as well, offline, online, just to let you know. Because um, like I said, because a large, uh, most of the population that we do tend to service have Medicaid, but we did realize there's a need for a uh, private pay insurance as well, commercial insurance, however you refer to it. And like I said, we will work with that as well for the students if needed or the community because we do school-based and community-based services. Sounds great. Thank you. If there are no other questions for our presenters, I would like to thank them again for taking their time and I hope it was beneficial to everyone and welcome Sheila Giovanni to uh, present the communicable disease update. Sheila, are you ready? I am. Thank you so very much. Please let me know when you can see my screen, Kelly. I am presenting. Can you see it? No. It hasn't shared yet. I don't see anything yet. If you like, if it's not sharing, I know sometimes teams just won't work no matter what you try. If you want to maybe pop it in uh, a private chat and I can upload it and share it. You want to do yeah, that? So, yeah, I'm so sorry. I, I surely will. I can see it okay. on my part, but I'm not sure why it's not presenting here today. One second. No problem. Teams is very temperamental. I've had that happen before. And then you scramble and try to figure out how you can get it to work. 
on the fly, no problem. We'll just hold off for a few minutes and then we'll get that going. Okay, Kelly, I just shared the presentation with you. Can you upload it for me, please? Okay, did you email it or? I how? emailed it. Okay, give me one second. Okay. Thank you, my apologies again. There we go, Sheila, it's coming up and you should be able to control the slides. Okay, great. So do you um, actually see my slides now? Yes, it's, it's, can everyone see it? Yep. Okay. Okay, great. So thank you. So thanks so much, Callie, for that introduction. And um, thank you for our speakers of the hour. Um, very informative presentations, definitely enjoyed that. So today, um, Communicable Disease Update will highlight pertussis. So as you, many as you may know, pertussis is a common disease in the United States, and it experienced peaks in reported diseases like every few years, and then we have our frequent out outbreaks. So it is important to note that our outbreak case definition for pertussis is five or more epilink cases. So pertussis is a respiratory illness commonly known as whooping cough, and it is very contagious, and it is caused by a type of bacteria called Bordetella pertussis. So this chart here represents all reported pertussis cases in suburban Cook County from fiscal year 2020 to 2023. I do want to point out in 2020, our most cases that we had at one peak was in January with 33 cases. So in 2021 and 2022, there were only eight cases and 15 cases reported respectfully. So as of October 2023, there has been a total of 22 reported cases this month alone, bringing the total number of cases to date to 106 cases. Keeping in mind that we still have several months left before we conclude our 2023 pertussis data. So we're already, about double the amount of cases that we've seen in 2020. So as noted in the earlier slide, um, pertussis is very contagious disease and it is only found in humans. Um, pertussis 
spreads from person to person through respiratory droplets, and people with pertussis usually spread the disease to someone else by coughing or sneezing or spending a lot of time near one another where breathing space is shared. Um, infected people are most contagious for about two weeks after the cough begins. And it is important to note that pertussis vaccine is the most effective tool to prevent the disease. So it is common for parents to inform the school of pertussis diagnosis. So in those such cases, we ask that you please notify us the Cook County Department of Public Health as soon as possible, or at least within 24 hours. Our team will investigate to confirm the case, and then we will identify close contacts. It is imperative to note that until the child has been on antibodies for five days, they should be excluded from school and or daycare. And then we will provide you with a letter to inform the parents of the exposure within the classroom in the school setting. It is important to be aware and to monitor your school environment for any additional people who may start exhibiting symptoms of respiratory illness and then inform the nurse. I love giving resources. So here are a few resources to add to your infectious disease prevention toolbox. Um, these are resources that can easily be found, which the links are shared to you. Um, one is a parent fact sheet um, that you can put in your two box to share with parents as cases of pertussis, um, as we have noted earlier, are on the rise. Um, we have our general information on pertussis through CDC, as well as our rules of Illinois Department of Public Health, which we refer to as our administrative codes that focus specifically on Protasis. So siren alerts, how many of you are aware of siren? Um, how many of you have signed up to be in the know? So many of you may be wondering what is siren? So siren is an organization designed by IDPH to provide emergency planning, alerting and notification systems, which is essential for providing critical information during emergencies. It does serve as a centralized point for finding and creating and sharing information among the federal, the state and the local offices. So with siren alerts, you can stay well informed about hazardous, including emergency preparation responses, outbreak notifications and investigation and recovery. So provided as the link for registration instructions, if you would like to sign up, um, we here at the local health department re receive siren alerts all the time. Um, we have been informed that many of you may not be aware of siren or have not signed up. So it is a very informative um, if I may, newsletter that comes out to keep us in the know. So definitely wanted to make sure that you guys had that information readily available. And then finally, um, as we just concluded this very brief overview of, of pertussis, I did want to bring to your attention another respiratory um, infection, um, which is COVID-19. So I wanted to provide a friendly reminder, which I do believe Callie done already, to let you know that we do provide COVID-19 testing kits. And for your convenience, I have asked my team to include the link for the form and additional information in the chat for you. So thank you so very much for your time. Um, thank you again to the um, presenters of the hour. I really enjoyed learning about um, vaccines and all of the services that you provide to um, suburban Cook County and our surrounding area. Um, and Kelly, back to you. Thanks, Sheila. That was great information. Are there any questions for Sheila or any of her team while we have them on here? It is respiratory health season, so there may be some questions regarding any mitigations, any um, uptake in infections. If not, that means we are doing a great job about keeping you guys informed and you guys are doing a great job about staying informed. So we don't need to ask any questions. I know that there were questions about um, 
receiving those test kits by mail. And I, I believe Michelle answered that question. So I appreciate you mm -hmm. answering the question, Michelle. And someone was unmuted. They had a question. Did I hear something? Oh, maybe it was just feedback. If there aren't any more questions, feel free to um, take advantage of that resource. We have tons, literally tons of test kits that we can give out to your school or your organization, and you can request them using that link. Again, I'd like to thank Sheila and Michelle and Tarek for attending and their assistance. And I also want to thank our mobile vaccine resources for taking the time out to come on Amy and Kamar and April for sharing their information. I hope that it is of good use and we can use that within the community. Feel free to reach out to any of us with any questions. You are welcome, Kristen. Enjoy a nice, cool weekend. Hopefully you guys can get to a pumpkin patch or something and enjoy this nice weather. Have some cocoa, make some chili and watch some spooky movies. So you guys have a great weekend and thank you so much for your support. We will see you at our next meeting on November 17th at 2 p.m. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.